Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. My name is Frank Malarsik, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I use Python to import data into my stock tracking spreadsheet. I use Google Sheets for a lot of my stock tracking, and it's really helpful. But uh, some of the data, I'm using a lot of import HTML functions and sort of scraping it off the internet, which is a good way to do it. But uh, sometimes if you have a lot of those function calls in your spreadsheet, then it sort of slows it down. And sometimes they are just loading and buffering for a while. And it's just sort of random how that works. Um, so using Python and just importing the data um, like once every week or something like that for values that don't need updated every single second. Uh, that's really helpful just to make your spreadsheet cleaner and work more smoothly. So basically I'm going to be showing you how to do that. And so you do need Python installed on your computer to be able to do this, but uh, there's thousands probably of YouTube videos showing you how to do that. So I'll link one in the description. Um, or you can search up your own, but you definitely need Python. And then you also need some packages, which we'll go over, and those are pretty easy to install. And uh, so you need that as well. Okay, so to get the data that I'm going to import into my Google Sheet, I use the Yahoo Finance package. Um, so I'll leave the link in the description that explains how to use that. Um, I wanna shout out Fire Options Trading on YouTube. Uh, he basically showed me how to use it, or at least introduced me to it and showed me where to go to learn about it. So he showed me to this website and it enabled me to learn about it and use it. Um, and then I'll also leave another website in the description that just has some more info on how to use it all. Um, but this is just a basic overview. So uh, if you go into your command prompt, you install it uh, with this command and then you also need all these other libraries or packages. Uh, so if you don't have them or if you're not sure, you can just try installing them all and if they're already installed, it'll just say it's already installed and you won't have to worry about it. Um, so there's basically two modules is what they call it. So the one is for stock info and the one is for options. So I just use the stock underscore info module and then I basically just use the git underscore stats method and that just returns a bunch of data about the company, so I'll show you that in a second. So this first uh, file I have is just a super simple example. Sorry about the notepad, but that's just how I use, uh, that's just how, how I code all my stuff. I just write it in notepad. Um, I don't think that's what most people do, but that's just what works for me. So you import the yahoo underscore fin uh, package dot stock underscore info because you want the stock info section of it not the options and then you name that si or at least that's what i'm naming it and then i'm just making a data variable and calling si dot git underscore stats which is that method i said i was going to use and then i just pass a ticker i want which in this case i'm just going to pass microsoft and then i'm just going to print that out so i can show you real quick in command prompt if i run that oh sorry So I'm going to run that and then it's going to return all these stats and you can notice how they're arranged so they all have a row here and then they have these columns so the attribute and then the value. So if we want, if we want to select one of them in particular we can use that this dot loc function with the brackets and we can pass the row and then the column name. So if I wanted to get the x dividend date you can look down here it's in row 25 and the column for the data is called value. So I would pass 25 comma value in uh, single quotation marks. And then I can print that out. So here I'll just change this. This is just a, this uh, pound is just a comment. So I'll uncomment these two and then I'll comment this one so it doesn't show up. And then I'll just run it again and then it just prints out the x dividend date for Microsoft which is August 18th and that's the same thing that shows right here as the x dividend date that we got before. Alright so that's the brief overview of the Yahoo Fin uh, package and then the other package I'm using is gspread 
and this is what allows me to access the Google Sheets. Um, so this looks kind of complicated and it's kind of confusing, but basically you have to do some things with Google Sheets to allow Python to be able to access your specific Google Sheets file. Um, and I didn't come up with any of this. I found it on YouTube. I'll link uh, the video. It's from a channel called Jmart Media. Uh, so if you're going to do this, you definitely need to check that out so you can actually know how to do it. I mean, you could just copy this, but even that wouldn't work. There's some other steps involved. Uh, so definitely go do that. So you basically, basically this part right here, all of this stuff is just getting it connected to the sheet, the uh, Google Sheets. And then with this, I named my sheet file just sheet. So I'm gonna do sheet.update underscore cell. That's how you can change the cell value. And then I pass the column in and the, or sorry, the row first and then the column and then what I wanna put in there. So I'll show you this sheets file. And right now you can see that in the second row and the fifth column, there's just this formula here. So if I run that file, it should put hello in that cell. So let me go back to the file. All right, and then I'll run it here. All right, and then it's just gonna run in here, and then if I go back to my file here, it says hello. So it, uh, it worked, basically is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna change that back to what it was. And then now I'm gonna show you basically how I get all of my data in. So, I mean, this is just all an example spreadsheet. It's not my actual spreadsheet. Um, so basically this is all the, just importing the G spread and the Yahoo Finance packages and getting them all set up is that this top part here from here up. And then this part, I'm using a for loop because I'm gonna put all these values in for each ticker symbol that I have. So I'm using from two to 23, and I'm gonna use that as the row. So you can see when I'm, here, I'll just walk you through it. So I'm getting the ticker symbol first because I have that listed in my spreadsheet on the left-hand side, so that's in column one, and then it starts at row two and goes to row 22. Row 22. So I'm using a variable to represent the row. So in here, um, I have the I in the range of two to 23, so each time it's gonna go through basically a row of the spreadsheet and change the values that I want. So I have to get the ticker first because I have to pass the ticker in to get the stats for the right company. So if I just do sheet.cell and then pass in that cell, so I, which is the row, and then one, which is the column, dot value, that's gonna give me the ticker. And then I'm gonna get the X dividend date, the pay date, the dividend amount, and the beta. So I'm just using the data.loc, with the square brackets, and then I'm passing in the row number that it appears in the data frame that we saw earlier right here. So I'm passing in the row number, so for the X dividend date, it's row 25, and then I'm passing in value in single quotation marks. Um, so I'm doing the same thing for the X dividend date, the pay date, the dividend, and beta with their respective rows. And then I'm using sheet.update underscore cell, and I'm putting in the row, which is I, as we said before, and then the column just represents where I want it in the spreadsheet, and then I'm putting in this value that I just got here. So I'm doing that for these uh, four other values as well. And then for the dividend and the beta, uh, a company might not have a dividend, so I wanna have some error handling. So I'm basically saying if it's not a float or a, basically a number, then I'm just gonna put none in there. And then same for the beta. Sometimes if a company's new or it doesn't have history for whatever reason, then there's no beta. So if there's no, if it, there's no number in the beta, then I'm just gonna have no data show up. So I'm gonna run this. And as you can see right now, the Google Sheet, all these columns are empty. Um, so I'm gonna run it real quick. All right, and then we'll wait. It, uh, it doesn't go like instantly, it's gonna take a little bit, but as you can see, it's starting to input these values. And we'll fast forward a little bit. Oh, 
Okay, so it's done now. And as you can see in this, for the companies that didn't have a dividend, it said none. And then over here, uh, it said no data for this one beta because Carrier Global, it's pretty new. So I guess it just doesn't have enough data to give it a beta value. Um, but there's also one other thing that's a problem and that's that the, all the dates are off by one day. So for example, I know for a fact that Johnson & Johnson just paid out the other day on September 8th, but it says the payout date should be the 7th. And again, I know Microsoft pays out on the September 10th, but it says September 9th here. So for some reason, the data they have is one day off. So what I did is I created a little script in Google Sheets to change that date by one I couldn't really figure out a way to do it before. Uh, I couldn't figure out a way to do it using Python, like before I put it into the sheet. Uh, so I just had to use a Google Sheets script. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm not really sure how I got it to work. I was just messing around with it for a while and eventually it worked. So I'm not gonna show you that right now because I really can't explain it that well. Uh, so if you guys want to know how it works I'll try to figure it out and maybe make a video in the future um, but right now I'll just show you I'm gonna run it and it's gonna change all these dates by one see and also for some reason the companies with no dividend the ex dividend date and pay date are like way in the past so for some reason it takes those out which really is not a problem because uh, I don't need those dates anyway. So now you can see these are all updated. Like Microsoft, it says the 10th now for the payout. Johnson & Johnson, it says the 8th. So I know those are all right. Um, so yeah, that's how I pull all that data in. And I might implement this into my spreadsheet soon because it would be really helpful just so I don't get a bunch of errors and buffering and loading and slowing down my spreadsheet because uh, sometimes that's a pain. So the quote of the video is, fall in love with some activity and do it. Nobody ever figures out what life is all about and it doesn't matter. Explore the world. Nearly everything is really interesting if you go into it deeply enough. So that quote is by Richard Feynman and he was a physicist among many other things uh, in the 20th century. And I just really admire Richard Feynman. Uh, he was just a brilliant physicist, but at the same time, he was just such a complex person. He was a avid musician and artist and really just into everything and so this is just really illustrates that and it's really just a good thing to think about. I hope you enjoyed the video just like with stocks and the stock market I'm really not an expert in any way at this stuff so uh, this is just showing you guys what I'm doing and maybe it'll help you uh, be able to make your spreadsheet better or maybe you'll find some other way to implement this into your spreadsheet that's even better than what I'm doing, but you sort of figured it out from what I was doing. So that's just what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you're not already, please subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. Uh, it would really help me out a ton. So with that, I'll just say thank you very much again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.